football since its inception in 85, but this year I'm pleased to announce that with the provision of sufficiently good enough lighting at some of the suburban grounds, Tui's Monday Night Football this year can be expected to be taken to the suburbs occasionally. Well, tonight it's South Sydney versus Illawarra, and as has been the case with the Steelers so often this year, they went down narrowly in the corresponding round at Redfern back on the 16th of March by 13 points to 10. Let's check the teams right now, and we'll go to Bill and Graham first up in the Illawarra room. Here's Billy Anderson. Illawarra should be going into this match with plenty of confidence. They lost narrowly to Souths in the first round, but had a good win last weekend over North. Their team readout for tonight is Larder, McIndoe, Hardy, Hetherington, who's the captain, Mannix, Kissel, Mackey, and the forwards, Patterson, Carberry, Upfield, Worthington, Bolt, and Smith. Well, of course, in recent weeks, South Sydney were riding high as the Winfield Cup competition leaders. But then, of course, they ran into losses against Balmain and St George in the last fortnight. They have fallen from grace, although tonight they get their opportunity to consolidate their position in the top three. Unfortunately for them, a couple of late changes as we check the Rabbitohs lineup. Fullback Neil Baker, the wingers Ross and Moon in the centres are David Cruikshank and David Moon, the halves to Jura and Coleman from the forwards. Lock forward Wayne Chisholm in the second row, Les Davidson and David Boyle for Phil Gould. The front rowers Tony Rampling and Greg Evans in 25 for Ian Roberts and their hooker and captain Mario Fennick. Thanks Bill and thanks Graham and of course here at the cricket ground tonight the crowd entertained by the Tui's Rugby League Rockettes and of course Debbie Newsom. We've got the fireworks and the unveiling of the Monday Night Football mascot, Wacker. Wayne Pearce will be at home via the live eye and our special guest co-commentator, Don Lane. Thanks, Ray. Well, what could be better? Monday Night Football. And what a place to kick it off. The Sydney Cricket Ground. Best lights in the whole town and it looks like it's going to be a great game. The Illawarra Steelers and, of course, my own Rapidos. <laughs> Not that I'm biased. I really want to wish the Steelers good luck or, as we call them, South Juniors. Anyway, if you really want to tip on who I think is going to win tonight, have a Look at that one. Monday night, on the lights, Monday night. The teams and of course Wacker making his uh, initial appearance here at Tui's Monday Night Football. Uh, Don, a, a big one. <laughs> a great entrance, I'll tell you. Inside that thing, I was afraid he wasn't going to come out on his feet. Well, that's some, that's some egg, and of course, we're still waiting for the players as the Rockets continue to go uh, through their routine. So, we'll take you back up to our central comedy position and Ray Warren. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Don. Yes, we're waiting for the teams now to come on down for this uh, initial Tui's Monday Night Football match. In fact, here come the Steelers. I mentioned uh, in the upfront preview how they went down 13 to 10 against South at Redfern back on March 16. Bill's already given you that team. I was talking to Mike Patterson in the dressing rooms earlier, and I've got to tell you, he was supremely confident. Very, very confident of victory. There's their captain, Brian Hetherington, State of Origin player from here at the cricket ground last Tuesday. And here they come, the Rabbits. Here comes Laney's team. Um, a crippling blow to them, losing players of the caliber of Gould and Roberts. David Boyle, though, he's a tough customer, comes into the second row for Gould. And Greg Evans, Bill was telling me he's got a kicking game in his kit bag. There's the fireworks and uh, the uh, ceremony, the pomp, continues here at the cricket grounds up where it left off in 1985 as one of the success stories of rugby league last year. Magnificent arena, the cricket ground. Greg McCallum in charge of the, the initial match. But uh, let me give you the tip, even though it might feel a little bit cold out there, if you can make it down to the SCG, the Pat Hill stand, the Brewongle, uh, there's plenty of good accommodation here. In fact, I've got to tell you that a lot of the people that uh, are at the cricket ground aren't within camera's range. There's cosily uh, hidden away in some of the areas. There's the Brewongle, of course, a very popular meeting place at the cricket ground these days. Well, there's Wacker up on the dais uh, to his Monday night football mascot. Certainly an auspicious debut to say the very least. Neil Baker placing the ball for kickoff. That cricket pitch area has dried out considerably since 
yesterday's clash between the Dragons and the Eels. And so Greg McCallum calls time on as Baker gets us off and running in the opening match of Tui's Monday Night Football. And this is Mannix. And met by the South Sydney reception committee, four of them in all, and a penalty goes to Illawarra. Again, South inside the five. Back on the Illawarra 22 line. South last year provided us with one of our very best Monday night football matches. Kick for touch is a good one, finding it about five metres into South Sydney's area. I wouldn't be surprised if the Steelers stretch them right out, Bill. Probably surprised if there's anything... Oh, good ball! ball. Well, it's a game that'll go right down to the wire, this one. You've got two sides that are, that are fairly similar. I think Illawarra have a slight advantage with pace in the backs and probably South with aggression in the forwards. So it was a neat piece of football here. Uh, we saw Michael Carberry put into a hole and here's a penalty going to Illawarra differential well, Steve Worthington that gave that beautiful pass to Carberry and if Carberry he was uh, given a bit of a, a how's your father from South Sydney of course Carberry played with the Rabbits before going to the Steelers. Bolt taking the tap. Takes it ahead himself and gains about seven metres. Come back to Worthington and it's Peter Smith met by Evans in 25 and Davidson's wearing number nine. Penalty to South. He didn't play the football. Well that's it's a silly mistake to make so close to the line with about four tackles up your sleeve and he gets up here and he doesn't rake the ball back with his foot Peter Smith and heavens above he should know better four tackles left too Baker takes the line kick three penalties in three minutes Rampling wearing 11. We'll have the footy tab information for you just a little way down the track. Penalty to Souths. And Tony Rampling far from happy. And Tony will give as much as he cops. Yes, I'd reckon you'd know. kick for touch finding it about eight meters into Illawarra's area here's Evans Coleman De Jura Davidson lurking out off two pivots Coleman 23 is Boyle South on a wrap to the right they'll come back on the next play to the left in fact Illawarra were waiting for it then and uh, Fennec pinched about 15 meters they're inside the 22 now outside it back to the 32 and Baker it came off the head of Carberry that'll be play on you're right McCallum you're dead right it's Jeff Hardy South winning 23s, 15-10 Illawarra, the reserves 14 to 8. Plays about 10 metres now on the Illawarra side of halfway. And South have made a positional change. They picked Neil Baker in the uh, in the fullback position, but Crookshank playing his first first grade game has gone to fullback, and Baker's playing in the centres. I think full Crookshank had his hands full playing his first game under lights. Larder kicking down the ground and Crookshank goes back. Worthington joining forces there with Michael Patterson. So South now taking it out from their own 22. Fennick, a dummy half run. They're looking to spread the ball back, I would think, to Baker for the kick down the ground. This is De Jura. Coleman back at 
goes to Baker now. And his kick is going more for field position than for the sidelines. As we saw yesterday, this is Mannix. Michael Patterson, his wife, gave birth to twin boys last Tuesday, so he's on a real high. Pato. In fact, I think Terry Liebeter was telling us that his wife had, uh, had a baby on Saturday. And we caught it very briefly on camera yesterday as he was telling Graham Hughes. So good luck to them both. This is Mick Carberry play near the halfway. And cross to Wayne Pierce at his home shortly. And uh, Wayne of course will give us his impressions on this match. David Fordham's with him. They'll talk at half time and at full time. Across from Coleman to Duran now to Baker. Baker's away from Patterson. Picked up by Upfield wearing the Illawarra headgear. Davidson went there and pulled down by Smith and Hetherington. Phoenix a dummy half. Territory uh, very much Illawarra's way at this stage. Clear of South Sawara and Illawarra, South have changed their pattern slightly. They normally take the ball right across the field. South with a break. Yes, they normally take the ball right across and spread it back to their centres who fall back to this side, but they're not doing that. They're just wrapping play most of the time and finding yardage from dummy half. Good kick by Baker, finding the line. Nothing, nothing, Illawarra and Souths in Tui's Monday Night Football. To the other, and you come back to a scrum as you left us, but this time it's on the uh, member stand side. Mackie feeds it, penalty, Souths. He's pinched the Illawarra hooker, Michael Bolt. So Baker comes across from the 5 8 position, just repeating. five eighth or centre, Bill? Centre, yeah. DeJura is still 5 eight. There's been a swap between Crookshank, who was in the centres, and Baker, who has picked his fullback. OK. Now it's Fennick. He throws a, a long pass out to Rampling. They're only about eight or nine metres out from the line. As uh, Fennick again turns his back on the defence, he's able to get the ball to De Jura. And Bronco is tackled about 11 metres out from the line. And dummy half goes Evans in 25, in the team for Roberts. Away to Coleman, he cuts out Davidson, picks up Baker, he cuts out one, finds Moon. Ball goes to ground, Ross dives on it for South, And a knock-on will be played. the Tui's replay of this beautiful long pass from Baker. He couldn't have hit, he couldn't have hit David Moon any sweeter. And he was probably entitled to catch the ball, David Moon. And that was more like the South Sydney pattern of play. Collapsing the scrum against South and McCallum again finding the need to use that whistle. Yeah, what South did then was they took it two or three across the field, got about three quarters of the way across, and then they stretched it back to their back line with their, their two centres folding back to this side. And that's, that's fairly orthodox for them. Lada. Finding the, the line about 32 metres out. Let's go to the sidelines. Here's Graham Hughes. Couldn't get the full extent of it, but Mario Fennig ran to the sideline, called to the South Sydney bench and called for the South Sydney doctor, Nathan Gibbs, to be brought out onto the field. The trainer didn't know what it was about, but he's gone in search of the doc, and Fennig's the man in trouble. This is Smith. So there's obviously some trouble there for South Sydney. As Mackie puts the kick in, Crookshank has to do a 360. He's got the ball outside the 22. And uh, launching himself into the tackle was Michael Carberry. Cleaning up was Worthington. Now the ball across to one of the Moon brothers, Jason. Jason Moon, the blonde-headed winger. He looks like he's pretty quick off the mark. Fennick turns it back, finds Rampling. Across to Coleman. On it goes through Boyle to DeJura. Ball goes loose. Illawarra comes up with it. Running across the ground was upfield. He gets the pass away to McIndoe. Very fast, this man. 
keeping the legs in the field of play. Upfield the dummy half. It's back to Patterson. Out the back goes uh, the ball to Hetherington now. Hetherington to play at about 20 metres out from the line. Play almost in the centre of the ground as they sweep back to the blind side. And a nice ball from uh, Kissel. The 5 8 has gone loose as the defence came in and made the hit on upfield. place out there for the faint-hearted and in fact the, this man that we're about to talk to he'd know something about that John Lurch O'Neill is with Graham Hughes on the sidelines John all important uh, the rabbits have got, got to get themselves back on the rails yes Graham it's a very important one for us it's a sort of a semi-grand final they've got to win this one to stay up where we are if we lose this one we're back in the uh, danger zone and it's uh, it's very very important the two points tonight huh? there's been plenty of teams already that have uh, underrated these Illawarra Steelers well they've had a pretty good year they've only been uh, I think they've only been beat well one uh, so far, and they're going to be very hard to beat tonight. They're a good side. South forward, is there any, any, any really, I know they're searching for more consistency. Do you think they might have got a bit complacent leading the competition? No, I don't think so, Graham. I think that uh, uh, they had a letdown against Canterbury, they had another one against Balmain, St George, but um, they're on a young side. They've got a lot, you know, they're, they're improving, and uh, tonight's a good test for them, although there's a couple out tonight. Okay, thanks for joining us, John. Thanks very much, Graham. John O'Neill. One of the favourite sons at South, nothing, nothing, Illawarra and South. South. South having taken a penalty, but Illawarra with the ball now. Carberry. This is Mannix. Smith. Steelers have been getting wraps all around here tonight. Everybody is telling us how good they are and how unlucky they've been. Maybe we've been a little bit too uh, too complimentary to them. In fact, I was surprised that John O'Neill was paying them too many compliments. Wayne Pierce, of course, has been on the arena against them, and Wayne's at home well. watching the match. Uh, Wayne, <laughs> what about Illawarra, in your opinion? I think um, they're going quite well, Ray, but uh, they've given away a few too many penalties for my liking. What about on the field, though, Wayne? I'm talking about in past encounters. Everybody's telling us how they have only just got beaten by a few. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a good bustling side. I think that's the, the big the thing that they've got in their favour is they're an enthusiastic young team. And um, we had certainly had a fair bit of trouble with them down at um, Wollongong Showground recently. And I think they've caused a lot of teams a lot of problems, as you said. Well, I'll leave you to whatever you're doing there with David Fordham. <laughs> Finish our dinner. Rams, yeah. I should tell you, I've got the uh, sponsor's brew here, but I'm not gay enough to open it. It appears he's flat. The wheels of the uh, walls might fall down. <laughs> Thank you, David. South Sydney with the ball now, just outside their 22. Played by Crookshank. It's Jason Moon that comes away with it. And a good gaining ground by this, uh, this young winger. He's uh, very fast off the mark. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I think I've only seen him once or twice in... Uh, my period as a commentator and I hadn't noticed how quick he was but here's a penalty going now to South Sydney. Ten metres their side of the halfway. Nil all. Both sides up to this point in the game have been, been fairly happy to play it tight. If anything, Souths have been the ones that have tried to spread the ball and that was the tactic that I expected Illawarra to, 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 to look at. They've been going now for, what, 24, 25 minutes and it shouldn't be too long before I think Illawarra will try to spread this ball, open the game up because that's where they've got an advantage, out wide with their pace. Davidson, middle of the ground, about 28 metres out. Dura, Coleman, long ball, oops, no, he's, uh, Callum's ruled a chest high. This was the pass from Coleman, I was about to give it the big rap, there's no doubt about it, the South player Crookshank played at the ball, for a moment I was thinking that a player had been tackled not in possession, but he played at it, it was all legal. So the penalty goes to Illawarra, just outside their 22. And Steve Larder taking the kick for touch. Shut up, man. 
Any further, Graham, on that um, call for the South Sydney doctor? Well, I did finally get to speak to the South trainer. It's a, it's a problem that I think we saw Fennec, uh, an ankle injury that he sustained in a game that we had at Brookvale Oval, the clash against Manly Baringa. It's flared again. Uh, he, he's obviously got the option. Well, if he's going to call for the doctor, he's, he might be looking for a painkiller at half time. Upfield chiming into that blindside rush, and Hetherington in number four is tackled by uh, Tony Rapley. Play pretty close to the halfway. Upfield. Kissel, the five eights. and finding touch just outside the 32. All right, let's check the footy tab right now with John Croucher. Uh, yes, Ray, the dividend pool for tonight's match on pick the result is $37,000, and nearly two-thirds of all entries have gone for South with the most popular score, Illawarra 10, South Sydney 18. Thank you, John. It's like Grand Central Station here tonight. The jury. He's put it down. It's a red ball. Played by Carberry. Smith. You can bet your bottom dollar he'll play this back with his foot, Peter Smith. Second tackle of six just outside the South 22 line. This is Bolt. That's Worthington. A short ball to Mackey, then a short pass to Carberry, and he looked on his left. No support. Lada, Mackey, cut out pass, Kissel, grubber kick goes over the uh, over the touch line. It came off a South Sydney player. Well, our guest commentator tonight, he's already told you who he's who he's rooting for. Don Lane, how are they going in your opinion? Well, I, I think they're, they're doing all right. They're holding their own. They should be doing a lot more, actually. Um, we were just commenting on the fact that some players are making moves that aren't there. And consequently, they're dropping the ball a lot. Well, here they are bringing it out from inside their own in goal through Coleman. It's gone across through Moon and over with Brett Ross. He's gone outside the 22. Now he's run into some traffic and he's going back and around. The referee saw what Illawarra appealed for a penalty for obstruction, but the referee said, I saw it. No obstruction. Play on. Boyle tackled in 23. Still no score. Nil all. Illawarra and Souths. Mackey. Across now for Worthington to give to Carberry. Then it goes to Hetherington. Inside the 22. Comes to the 10 metre line. McIndo, but he's put down. Well, there was a real chance and a half here for Illawarra. They're really piling on the pressure. It's only a case of probably holding the football for a longer period of time. They've got to mount that pressure right to the summit. And uh, it's just short of it that they're breaking down. Well, what you have here is a side in South Sydney that are finding difficulty in getting the ball out of their own quarter and they're making mistakes when they're trying to do it. But when Illawarra get the ball, they're making the same sort of mistakes for the, for the same reason. They're simply pushing passes that aren't on. Well, just beyond the 22. Coleman. And he's gone for the touchline and found it. Good kick by Craig Coleman. Here's a break. Down. And a differential penalty went to Illawarra against Mario Fennick for feet across. And it's a very good welcome at this stage to our viewers right throughout New South Wales and Queensland to your first edition of Tui's Monday Night Football. Welcome to it. We're at the Sydney Cricket Ground and I hope you enjoy it. Well, this is a penalty to Illawarra. Right in front of the referee, David Boyle has knocked the ball intentionally or accidentally, it doesn't really matter, from the arms of the Illawarra player, Michael Carberry. And this will be an attempted penalty from right in front, 32 metres out. There it is on the Tui's replay to that, almost to that conclusion. There was no doubt about it that Carberry had been tackled and his field position couldn't be improved. And then right in front of Greg McCallum, he knocked the ball out of his hands. The full back, a 
Rada taking the attempt at uh, penalty. Later on tonight, we'll show you, um, as I said yesterday, just a flash of that Ray Price, Michael Cronin tribute that Graham McNeese put together, together with Gary Deans, for their testimonial night a little over a week ago. If ever you get the chance to see the 30-minute edition, do yourselves a favour. But uh, this is just a, a sneak preview, if you like, as Lada takes the attempt at penalty, and it's gone wide. And what was Crookshank doing? Still no score between the Steelers and the Rabbits. I've got a funny feeling Crookshank thought that he uh, should take the, take the ball and hold his hold the mark to come out to the 22. He was a bit undecided, but all he did by hesitating was give the Illawarra defence time to move up and make a tackle further upfield. Davidson's tackled now by upfield in 10, Patterson in 8. This is Boyle. Of course, Patterson's an interesting player wearing the number 8 jumper. He, he was a lock forward, wanted to play lock, but there was a bloke in his road called Price. Here's Coleman. Rubber kick for the touchline. Oh, nice kick. Finding it just inside, or just outside the 22, says the touch judge. This was a classic example of a grubber kick from Coleman. I don't get wrapped in kicks for touch these days in general play because, as you know, the feed goes to the opposition, depending, of course, on the field position. But um, it was a classic grubber kick from Coleman. Mackie giving it to Mannix. Kissel, it's out with that ladder into the back line. This is Hardy. A little while are now trying to open the game up a bit more. And more in the last few minutes, there's been a lot more ball movement from Hetherington. of Phil Gould, Don, uh, we knew it was going to play a pretty big part in the match. It's already coming through, I, I feel, with Craig Coleman being relied upon really to control the direction of the game with Baker playing in the centres. Yeah. De Jura. Sometimes that commentary from here is a bit, a bit difficult to, to hear when you're on that sideline down there where Don and Graham are. Oh, Boyle took a heavy knock. His head was set back. Rampling Davidson. Oh, he's stolen the ball, Kissel. He's off inside the 22. Here comes the defence. Still not held. They had a second bite at him. Did a good job, but he stayed in. And a penalty has gone to Illawarra. It's against the marker for the manner in which he struck at the ball. Here it is on the Tui's replay, the, the stealing of the ball by Kessel. He was desperately looking for a faster man like McIndoe or somebody else to come along on his inside. Taken by Bolt. He's gone to within three metres of the line. The prop forward Worthington in 11. Still two metres out. Still no score. Patterson inside for upfield. Eight metres from the line. Mackey. Line side through Carberry to Kissel. He floats one out for Worthington. He holds it back from McIndoe. Turns it inside. Picked up on the second bounce by Upfield. Given back to Mackey. Mackey Grubber kicks ahead. Cleaned up there by David Boyle. Touch judge in. Touch judge in. Normally I'd say to you that it must be to do with the attacking team. But I'm just wondering at what point the touch judge saw the illegality. Mackey was the man who grubber kicked ahead. What we saw on camera there was seen by Greg McCallum. Now this touch judge is making a report and there's somebody going to the bin. It's Boyle. David Boyle for 10 minutes in the sin bin. Five straight penalties.
penalties to the Steelers. 8-5 the penalty count to them. 10 minutes in the sin bin for David Boyle, number 23. anticipating that might happen and Rampling came up with the reward for that action penalty to Souths that'll be greeted hello ten more minutes in the bend he sent Michael Cowbury to the send bend for ten let's have a look at this seems that that's what he did to earn the 10 minutes in the sin bin. I don't know that there's much Michael Carberry could do about it. He made an effort to get up and play the ball. Davidson got up quickly, put him off balance, and that was all there was to it. Well, if he's going to send blokes to the bin for things like that, he's not going to have many left. This is Evans, one handed down on the bounce taken by Coleman. He's on the halfway, off to Baker. Baker away now for David Moon to give to his brother Jason. He comes back in field. By golly, I'll tell you what, every time he's handled, he's done well. Fennick, Coleman, De Dura. Crunching tackle there from Mackey over the top. Coleman. Chips over the top. Lada. Ten metres out from the line, not even that. Good tackle, Coleman. McIndoe. McIndoe. Outside the 22, tackled by Rampley. Well, Craig Coleman's working overtime, Don, in the absence of Phil Gould. He, he certainly is, and meanwhile, this little tactical move of putting Neil Baker into the back line has certainly paid off for him. And don't forget, later on in this game, you're going to see some things out of David Crookshank. He's an exceptional player. If he starts coming up here, you'll see some trouble. I think Souths are very lucky at the moment. They've been let off the hook at least three times. Ball to be played by Michael Bolt. This is Lada. And he's found touch. Here's a break coming up. No score, Illawarra. And a raking kick by Neil Baker gained them about 40 metres. The scrum will go down inside the Illawarra 22. Mackey to take it. The, the scrum feed, I was waiting to see whether or not Lada, the Illawarra fullback, actually touched it. Won by the Steelers. Still nil all at the cricket ground. out on footy tab at beer if it was nil all we might put that to our footy tab men although i don't know if the computer works that quickly across now to larder now it's with hardy this is hetherington baker's made the tackle this is hardy hardy's taken by moon there's absolutely nothing in this match as the scoreline might indicate, but by the same token, they've both been hitting very hard, both been making half breaks, but neither able to capitalise. Off the leg, says the referee. Now he's ordered a knock on. Oh, the crowd hoots and hollers, but unless it comes off part of the arm, it's not a knock on. And the referee was quite right. It came off the lad's knees. Then he makes the mistake. The ball was propelled towards his opponent's dead ball line off the hands on the second occasion, not the first. It comes off your head or your chest or anything like that. It's not a knock on. But the number of people that hoot and holler referees over it. That's with Patterson. 
Oops, there goes that defence again. Nothing more, nothing less. Big Davidson taking it up towards the halfway. Gets a pass out. It's um, running with the ball as Brett Ross, and he's tackled and lost it. Illawarra's got the ball, played by Lada, and it's with McIndoe now. McIndoe, he comes to Jason Moon. He's tackled on the halfway. Well, I'm sure that if you went into both sides at, at half time, you'd hear an identical talk because the team that's going to win this match is going to be the one that can control possession in the second half. They're both making an even number of breaks, but they're just not finishing them off. The team which concentrates, settles down, hold the ball for six tackles is going to get the money. Smith, five tackles gone now for the Steelers. Here's Mackie. And his kick for touch, finding it inside the 22. Let's have a look at the scrums and penalties. 5-2 the scrums to Illawarra. 8-6 the penalties also to Illawarra. You've heard the report from Graham on the sideline that Fennick is working with, well, one and a half ankles. To Jira. Don made the comment that he thought that the ploy of using Baker in the centres was working. I'm not so sure. I, I've got the feeling that Baker has slotted into the fullback spot beautifully this year, and that extra bit of space just takes a bit of heat off him. And I think he's relishing the fullback job. Five eighths maybe, but out in the centres, they've just got a little bit more extra time to get at him. Mind you, he's done nothing wrong. And there he is again in action as he puts that kick in and finds it about ooh, 35 metres out from the Illawarra line. So it's one minute we're up there, next minute we're down here, and uh, that's been the passage of the game. As Bill said, and I'm sure Graham would agree, the moment one team decides to hang on to the football for, for the full six tackles, just settle it down, play for tackle five, play for tackle six, and then that team is probably the one that's going to win the football match. This is McIndoe. Played back to Mackey. This is Larder in the cricket pitch area, which I said earlier had dried out a fair bit. And I think it has, but Graham tells us it's still pretty greasy down there. Patterson, back for Larder. And the ball has gone forward. South, uh, the referee playing the advantage. And it's uh, Crookshank who plays it. Don't know that Crookshank's 100% as this ball comes from Patterson. Larder, well, he had his chance. There's no question about that. Crookshank, the South's fullback, uh, I think he's got a few problems. It's the second time in the match he's either been grabbing at a leg or a hand. And now we've got a South player down injured. Trying to work out who it is. Is it Mario Fenny? It is. Well, if you just walked into the cricket ground, Don, you wouldn't probably believe, I mean, if you hadn't been following league all year, that Souths are lying, well, they could be lying equal, what, second tonight, and Illawarra's running two off the bottom. It's hard, it's pretty, pretty difficult to believe. They look pretty even to me out there. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you something, I really believe that Illawarra's looked a better team here tonight so far. I don't think you get any arguments, although things have been going a little bit their way, I suppose, in scrums and penalties, but... Well, coming back from the sin bin, but by the same token, it's, in, it's incredible they're running so far down the competition table. Or oh, Baker came through and put a, a tackle in on Mackey. The ball came back again fortuitously there for Illawarra. Is McIndoe rampling and Baker making the tackle with the lock forward Chisholm just getting in for a, a little bit of the action and now lost in the tackle so a scrum to go down just on the Illawarra side of halfway there's Boyle going up now first tackle that'll be looking for a runner moon's going down but McIndoe's back for it and here's McIndoe coming away up to towards the uh, 40 meter line well, there are only three minutes to go before half time and these are the periods in a match just before half time when defenses can tend to relax as players get tired and it's a good time to uh, to put through an attacking ploy chisholm tackled by Cassell or Cassell Boyle Davidson.
Robertson. Upfield of Worthington holding the progress of the big second or front rower. And they're watching the clock there in the sin bin for Michael Carberry. He's trying to break through the front of the gates there too, Carberry. Some of the officials said, hey, we'll back. Baker, a little chip over the top by Baker. Mackey's going back urgently, and Lada comes up with the ball. Lada's made a run of about 10 metres, turns it back to Hetherington. But all he did was really serve Brian Hetherington up with a dump. Carberry back on. That's Mannix, formerly with the Canterbury Club. Smith Evans the tackler in 25 coming over the top Fennick and Davidson Mackey Cassell Hetherington Fennick makes the tackle low rampling over the top Holding it back, knocked down by Bronco de Dura. Scrum to go down, it'll be an Illawarra feed. See it again as Mackey shaped a kick, held it back, was looking for the long ball, the cutout pass, looking for McIndoe. Scrum's going with the feed. Here's McIndoe. Chisholm taken off him by Boyle. It's gone out to Moon. It's come away from Baker. It's now with the wing three quarter Ross, and he's tackled out there. And Mannix. David Moon. Davidson. Quick hands from Boyle to Bronco de Jura. Tackled by Michael Bolt, who was trapped out wide. Coleman. Picked up by Crookshank. Crookshank. Beautifully tackled by Mackey. Grass cutting tackle. Baker goes for the drop goal. That's how urgent the situation is starting to appear. It's a field goal for Neil Baker. Right on half time. And there it is, the half time scoreline in Tui's Monday Night Football. South one, Illawarra nil. Here's a break and then back. Illawarra, no score. In fact, that uh, score line was... Um, well, it was a, there's a heavily strapped ankle on Fennick. I think it was 73 when Jack Gibson was coaching Newtown and Kenny Wilson kicked a field goal. Was it a playoff between Newtown and St George? Newtown won it 1-0. It was a playoff. But it was 73. That'll, that'll set you rugby league people searching. Here's the tackle count for you. Upfield 13 for the Steelers. Boyle 14 for South. And he did that. Topping the tackle count even with 10 minutes in the bin. Here's Jason Moon now. 75 somebody saying now. All right. Davidson. and on that occasion he was way off beam. 8,640 here tonight for Tui's Monday Night Football. As the ball goes to Hetherington, he's tackled just outside the 22 by Crookshank. Bolt. Carberry. Hit by 23 and 25. That's Boyle and Evans respectively now for Mackey and now back to the blind side Worthington inside for Patterson tackled by Fennick Mackey from dummy half one step then to Worthington now to upfield upfield is Hill no he's not he got the ball away to Worthington and uh, they're only about 
10 metres out from the line. Tackle number five. Out to Mackey. Over it goes now to Lada. Lada puts a kick in. And it may have shaved the edge of the upright, in fact. But it's gone over the dead ball line for the 22 place kick to restart for South. Here's the Tui's replay of it. The, the kick by Lada into a fairly, fairly deep in goal. I, I suppose it's all of 10, if not 11 metres. Well, I don't think it's as deep as the stadium where they've uh, gone for the maximum. Finnick to play it. Talking to the stadium, we're back there Sunday. With, uh, that big match between uh, the Tigers and the Eagles. Mario hobbling around in back play. Well, South is sitting back onto the field, hoping that he'd be able to get through this second half of the match. But the way he looks, he's going to be a virtual passenger unless he can uh, can get some movement back into it in the next few minutes. So Baker's kick has been played at by Lada, which automatically puts everybody on side. And Lada, I hope he wasn't faking for a penalty then, because he was actually pulled down by his own dummy half. side he tries to go between Boyle and Rampling four tackles Worthington Carberry and over the touchline so the scrum about 10 meters on the South Sydney side of halfway Back for Fennick. He's, he's going to say almost a passenger as it goes across to De Jura. What in fact Souths have said is that the, the Fennick's dummy half play is vital to their cause. It's a big wrap. Chisholm over the shoulder. That'll be play on. I don't think Illawarra touched it. And now it's gone back to the Steelers. As David Moon fritted away possession. And Illawarra comes up with the penalty. You wouldn't be writing this down as one of the classic games you've ever seen, but uh, it must be fairly heavy in the middle, but I still don't think that that's a valid enough excuse for some of this poor handling. So Illawarra taking the kick for line and finding it about seven or eight metres in the south area. And while they take the tap, Graham, you're almost sitting on the cricket pitch. Well, it is, it is very muddy, Ray. I, yesterday, of course, it was, it, it was bad for St George and Parramatta. And, and, and just before the uh, reserve grade fin game finished tonight, we had a little bit of uh, rain sprinkling down for 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, it was fairly bad for the start of the game. You've got to remember they're playing with the painted balls and also plenty of dew on the grass under lights. The balls are popping out more than, more than being bad, uh, bad uh, passes. All right, there's Carberry standing long enough to give to Patterson, on to Cassell, away to Hetherington, gets out of one, gets it to Hardy. Hardy can't get the arms free at the moment. And he's held by Moon and Ross. Mannix is a dummy half. And uh, Patterson overran the flight of it, but still a knock on. So another scrum to go down. Midway, 22 halfway, south end of the ground. About 35 minutes of the match remaining. South's come up with it. Still the scrums going with the feed. Nothing against the nothing against the feed. That's Coleman, Davidson. Rampling. Upfield the chief tackler with Worthington. Coleman. So, 1-0 in favour of South, Monday Night Football. Peter Smith. Feeling 
for a penalty. With this sort of high tackle. And now penalty goes to South. each other, don't you? Haven't you met my father? Yes, I do know. Yeah. You, you old blokes played together, didn't you? Oh, yeah, a long, long time ago, yes. Yeah. How you doing? Very good, Don, very good. You're looking very healthy. Oh, you always wear a smooth tour, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Bob, it's a bit of a disappointing game. Very dour, Grain. Yeah, I'm lucky I had to sleep this afternoon, otherwise I would have fell asleep up in the grandstand. But uh, you know, there's no fancy attackers out there, but it's a good uh, defensive game. And, uh, you know, as I say, he's going to win this game from here on in. All right, we might stay with the kick here with Neil Bacon. This is Baker from well, about 27 metres out, right in front. Getting away in flight, but still good enough to get the flags in the air, and South Sydney get the two points. They lead by three points to nil. South Sydney is trying to struggle through the forwards. Nobody's really searched out wide. And, uh, no, for the some point. reason, Graham, they're not using their back line, and... Uh, I don't know what it is. If, uh, I know they've changed the back line around to a certain extent, putting Baker back there. So, obviously, uh, yeah, they thought they would have used it, but uh, they're still using their forwards, and they're leading 3-0. So, Georgie, must, uh, Georgie Piggins, the coach, must think that they're weak in the middle there, so he's just utilising those forwards. Well, talking of the middle, uh, you've played it so many times, it, it does become a problem, that cricket pitch area, when, the, when there has been a bit of range in the league. Yeah, well, it certainly has. Well, you know, the, the obvious uh, tactic there is to keep out of there and uh, just work it towards the middle and come back the blind and use that. Like Chelsea have got two good, uh, two fast uh, guys on the wing, then they should utilise them, but uh, for some reason, they're not using them, and uh, con conversely, uh, Illawarra's got uh, good wingers too, and they're not using them either, so it's just a, a dour game at the present stage. Would you be looking for a lot more running from Dummy Hunt? Well, it all depends. Uh, Mario Fennec, as we all realise, is a uh, South leader from Dummy Half. Well, he's, he's carrying an injury. He's carrying an injury, but he's still going in there, so uh, possibly that is the instructions that they're using at the present time. But uh, I'm at a loss as, as to why uh, Illawarra don't use a kicking game. They don't, you know, not burying their their play, they just, uh, they know South have got a good defence and uh, they're just more or less just running one out at them and uh, you know, if they don't use that kick, well they won't break up their good South defence. Alright, all the balls with South now, Bob, thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, Graham. Yes, differential penalty to South. Was Michael Bolt penalised eventually for being down in the scrum. Baker's going to kick uh, at the perpendicular, really. Setting up a play that we don't want to be any closer than they were, that was about 15 metres out. So it's two simple plays towards the middle, or fractionally towards the middle. Now they put another one up behind to play the ball. It's Chisholm. Coleman 
to Jira, Baker, and that's Crookshank in from the fullback position. Five metres out from the line. Coleman again. Gets it to Baker! Baker scores! First try of the night. First try of Monday night football season. Scored by Neil Baker. Well, the script had been written at many, many training sessions down at Redfern as you watch the Tui's replay. They had two bites of the cherry. They were working on tackles four and five for the try. And this was the second bite that they had that paid off for them. Illawarra had the numbers here, but Baker had too much pace for uh, Worthington, who just couldn't, uh, for Upfield, who just couldn't go with him. You'll see here that Baker used to fend, used all the pace he had got around him. It was a fairly ordinary tackle, and he was able to go over in the corner. Baker will attempt conversion of his own try. 26. The sales rep, of course, he came to Sydney football from South Newcastle. He went to Canterbury before joining South Sydney. And only in the last month he signed a further two-year contract with South, which was contrary to a lot of people's um, forecast. I would have bet my bottom dollar Baker would be joining a Western Suburbs club next year on a fairly healthy contract. But uh, lo and behold, South moved in quickly and uh, signed him to a fresh two-year contract. Fennec doing a great job to hang in there. As I said, it's a great tribute, really, to the man's dummy half-talents that he's been left there. Of course, his, his leadership in the pack, too, is well documented. Baker from the touchline, 25 out, that's short and wide, and so no change. Seven points to nil in favour of the Rabbitohs over the Steelers. You betcha. You were going, you, you were a dirty, a dirty shade of white there when I last looked at you. David Crookshank made the first break, and of course, Baker scored over here in the corner. What more can you want? The move has worked, I think. I think you're spot on, Don. As I said earlier, they certainly had rehearsed it Thank well and truly, and they, it came off for them on tackle number five. Thanks, Ray. It's the first time tonight. <laughs> sets up the kick is bombarded from behind and Crookshank takes the tackle for South. The Lawara, a replacement coming on Graham. Wayne McPherson on the sideline with the uh, touch judge. He'll take the place of Steve Larder. McPherson to come on in 19 with the headgear. And as Wayne Pierce told us at half time, of course he is a goal kicker. And um, his services in that first half could have, uh, could have come in handy. Back for Baker, and Baker is just kicked deep down inside the Lawara's territory. And, oh, South coming up with a good football here. As uh, De Jura is tackled just outside the 25-metre mark. Now Fennec has gone to the canvas. It's the first time I think Phoenix found the canvas. It's missed him by about three feet, hasn't it? <laughs> Never got near him at any stage. Let's have another look. Whoa! <laughs> it was like watching the, uh, the wrestling. Patterson. Patterson was the man that threw the blow. Let's have another look at it now. Mario's there. Oh, I don't think it missed at all. I think it might have just grazed the whiskers on the cheek. But I'm sure Mario has run into stiffer combat. We'll take a break while I work this out. 
Dewey's Monday Night Football. And the penalty went to South. So whatever happened out there, Mario's got the benefit of the doubt and South have got the penalty. Another change, Graham. Seamus O'Connell on in 23 for the Steelers. That makes their second in the last minute or so. This time, uh, Steve Worthington, the man uh, leaving the field. Baker attempting this penalty from just inside that 32-metre line. He's only fractionally off-centre. He's kicked one from two. Well, I've never seen Patterson throw a punch before in rugby league, so obviously Mario has, has given him something to become upset about. But Fennick came out on top of it. Even further so, if Baker can pot this goal. Left the boot all right, he likes it. It's a goal. Nine points to nil. Nine points to nil in favour of the Rabbitohs over the Steelers. Quick restart by Illawarra. judge is is coming on from the far side baker kicked the ball and then he's been cuffed around the chin by the illawarra player now the penalty has been given where the ball landed or in fact was caught so i would take it from that that mccallum caught it out the uh, out of the corner of the eye Trying to identify the stealer, who was the culprit. There seems to be some confusion. Graham, you were sitting on top of it. Well, I, I did miss the incident with Baker. However, uh, the touch judge has come in to report an incident and has asked for the Illawarra players, all and especially the forwards, to turn around and check their numbers. Now, between the two of them, the referee and the touch judge has certainly got plenty of problems. I think it's number 12 for sure, Michael Bolt. Well, they, they, I, I can't work this one out. They're calling McIndoe. He was the man that uh, dropped the kick. Yeah, well, yeah, of course, <laughs> you're spot on. He was the furthest man from it. Uh, but, of course, the number two has got them confused. Have a look at it again. Down they come. Let's have a look and see the numerals. There's no question about what numerals are showing, the one and the two. And uh, they couldn't find the they couldn't find the defender. Well, they found one, but it was the bloke that marked the ball, 50 metres up the ground. I think if they could have identified the person correctly, it would have been certainly a sin bin job, at the very least. It wasn't a stiff arm, I want to say that, though, in defence of, of Bolt. And south with the football, Davidson. Oh, pirouette by Davidson, he's put a little bit of a... a little bit of a fringe on his work there. Played by Kutchen. Coleman comes blindside. Boyle getting the legs up high, finds Kutchen backing up. Just inside the Illawarra 22. Coleman, he's had a tremendous game. The Jura back for Coleman. He's always there or thereabouts. Hardy gets the intercept, but he's not going anywhere as Baker and Boyle wrap him up. So South slowly but surely getting on top, Wayne Pierce, as uh, you join us again from your home. Yeah, they're gradually getting the upper hand and um, you know, their forwards are taking control and, and certainly controlling a lot more possession than they were in the first half. 
Baker, I made a comment earlier, Wayne, you know, we've heard a lot about kangaroos and possible kangaroos, but he certainly wouldn't let you down in many, many departments and in many positions. He's a great kicker, great handler of the ball, and he can play in quite a few positions. I think him and Coleman are certainly playing outstanding games tonight for South. Particularly, uh, I thought the latter, Wayne, young, young Coleman, he's been all over the place. He's been the general, he's been the man backing up, he's been the man making the tackles. He's had a tremendous game. I think he's accepted a lot of the responsibility that would have fallen on Phil Gould's shoulders because Phil's out, out tonight and I think Coleman's just picked his game up in that area. All right, Wayne, we'll talk you into the game, okay? Thank you. Wayne Pierce, this is Jason Moon. Now. Davidson. Boyle. 15 minutes of time remaining. Coleman with the chip. He faked for the penalty, according to the ref. This is McPherson. Smith, tackled by Rampling and over the top by Chisholm. South Sydney. Uh, to Illawarra, I should say. And the penalty now again to the Steelers. And with under 15 minutes to go, trailing by nine points. They'll probably go for line. Kick. It's, it's almost a guaranteed two points with this man kicking McPherson. He's a nice kicker of the ball. Formerly played with South, Wayne McPherson, and I think he was with Eastern Suburbs too, wasn't he? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Next Monday night, Monday night, Monday night it'll be Canterbury, Bankstown and Western Suburbs. Mario shaking hands there with Chisholm. Am I to take it from that that Mario's about to leave? inside the 22 metre line, he's missed it. So no change in the score line to the Tui's Monday Night Football. 9-0 in favour of South. Well, they haven't been difficult kicks for Illawarra tonight. They've had, what, three shots now. And um, without a great deal of good fortune, it could have been six easy points for them. Good runner of the ball. He was on the brink of state of origin selection. He still may even pick up on the own jumper for the third encounter. This man is Seamus O'Connell. Mackey. Carberry. About 15 metres into South Territory now. The play with O'Connell. So many of these players from Illawarra, of course, have given service to other clubs. Out the back from Smith, picked up by Carberry, spread across to Patterson. Patterson to the 32-metre line, draws the defence, then to Hardy to Hetherington. Inside the 32, up to the quarter-way line, taken there by Jason Moon. Tackle's gone, they'll go for the kick here. McPherson puts up the, the bomb. It's coming down in a nice part of the field for the Steelers. It's going to uh, be with South Sydney's Rampling, though. So the big men went up for it. And uh, for a moment, I thought Illawarra were going to get a good deflection off the hands of Crookshank. But uh, it, it then went from Crookshank onto an Illawarra set of hands and then came down to Rampling. That's the way the referee must have viewed it, otherwise he would have been dead set offside, Rampling. This is Boyle. 
Let's take a match comment from Graham Hughes. Ooh. Well, as South Sydney come up with a very vital mistake, Illawarra, of course, got to take uh, control now, searching for those nine points on the scoreboard. Uh, Brian Hetherington's the man that's got to wear all the responsibility in this Illawarra back line. Uh, Billy Anderson and I were saying before the game that that's where they hold the advantage over the South Sydney side. Balmain found it easy to beat them out wide. St George, likewise, with only a wiki here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. They've got to start throwing this ball around uh, out to the backs and search for this winger, Alan McIndoe. They've, they've looted him alone. This is the man that they should be searching for. McIndoe playing it inside the 22. Moon is injured. This is Cassell. Pulled down by Davidson. And McIndoe is injured as play goes on to the centre of the ground. O'Connell. Dummy half is Mackey. And back it comes to the blind side for Carberry. And now it's with Upfield. Gets the ball out the back, but Souths have got it. For a moment, uh, he was going to get this ball to McPherson, but good fortune wasn't smiling on Illawarra then. This is David Moon. Chisholm tackled by O'Connell. And Souths are eating up plenty of tackles here inside their own 10-meter line. Now Baker has uh, got the kick in. Place kick too, taking Mannix a long time to bring it back. First into dummy half. And a penalty goes to the Steelers. It's against the marker. Um, Ross. For not uh, squaring up. for Illawarra, Graham. Yes, Ian Russell in 32 going out for Trevor Kissel, a 5'8". Oh, Patterson inside, inside and outside. It's gone to Carberry. Oh, it's been put down by the replacement. Baker. Russell had only just taken the field and he had a chance there to put Illawarra's first try on the board. Does like to have a body like this by Billy? What's he been pumping? surprised as Evans is utilised as a, a stopgap kicker for Baker if there's too much attention for Baker Evans is a good kicker and I'm sure he is but the moment Bill said that poor old Greg Evans he's had a couple of kicks and they've both gone out on the full it's gone out now to Hardy number three back to Russell if he can get it it'll be six more no and then he's ruled that the ball was propelled forward by the the Illawarra Steelers I thought for a moment that South actually got a hand to it He's spot on. It did come off the hand of Russell. Well, that's a good scrum by Bolt. In fact, the first scrum of the match won against the feed. Upfield. He missed the tackle on Baker upfield, but he's been a strong toiler for Illawarra. Now he's let one go, and it's a penalty to Illawarra. Against David Moon, in fact. As far as Upfield was concerned, he was saying, Mum and Dad like my face the way it is. Get out of here. And he let one go, and David Moon scurried away from the scene of the crime. Illawarra coming up with the penalty. O'Connell, formerly was uh, with Eastern Suburbs. Mackey holding it back, and now it's with Upfield. He shapes the flick pass and runs. Out to Patterson, he spreads the ball to Russell. And he's held inside the 22. Here's O'Connell. It gets out to Smith and across to Upfield. A couple of fellows in the Illawarra team have decided that 
They don't want to run forward anymore. They're more prepared to give the ball to somebody else to do the job. As Michael Bolt struggles to get up, Carberry, Mackey, Patterson, around the back for Hetherington, and he's well tackled there by David Moon. Now it's Mackey putting the, the kick high. It's coming down in the end goal. Oh, he doesn't know where it is, Crookshank. But it's a penalty, two Souths. He's ruled that one of the Souths players was held off the ball, or in fact, uh, interfered with by one of the Illawarra players in this contest for the ball. See it on the two is replay. Crookshank is under it. And as far as he's concerned, McPherson has taken Crookshank out of the game and has given a penalty to South. Let's take a short break. Back in just a moment. Brett Ross playing it on the Illawarra 22. Coleman. Davidson! Really hitting it up. Tackle's gone now for the, the Red and Greens. Coleman with a shot for drop goal. Looked okay from here, but the referee says wide. No change. 9-0. Upfield. That's exactly where he went. To a tune of about 10 metres. Smith. Russell on his inside or in fact it was Hardy Patterson from dummy half Bill tell me if I'm if I'm dreaming or not but Mackie the times I've seen him play he, he's been more of a runner tonight he's been getting the dummy half one pace out of there he's been pre prepared just to provide service particularly back down the blind side and I thought that Illawarra's best chance of opening the game up was to spread the ball out the open but they obviously haven't seen it that way but Mackie could have done more running he's a very elusive player through the centre of the rucks and I think he's uh, he's had opportunities to do that but obviously he was under instructions just to move that ball a little bit to his 5-8 Jason Moon playing it now, 15 metres on south side of the halfway, as Jajira is put down now. My base for Coleman. Coleman with it now, stops, gets it back to Davidson. from a standing start. That's a good run by Ross. Mackey comes across to put him in the touch. There'll be a scrum some 25 metres out from the Illawarra line. It was a good run by Ross. He was at a standing start and he really exploded down the, the showground side touch line. Off the feet, no knock on. This is Mannix. half Russell upfield a long ball out for Hardy wrapped up by Baker underneath there is David Moon Mackey long ball to Patterson now to Russell this is Hetherington now it's out to Mannix Mannix away from, no he's not, Dejura hanging on to a little bit of jumper hanging out the back of the shorts there. Patterson, McPherson, Carberry, away from one, gets it out now, and here's McIndoe, McIndoe with some space to work in, has to kick ahead, and I think Crookshank has given the penalty. He's waiting for the referee at the point where the ball landed. He's given the penalty. As McIndoe kicked ahead, Crookshank by right should have been sin bin for, I would have thought, a trip. But he's been uh, simply cautioned. As the ball goes out for O'Connell, he can't handle. And it's coming out now to where the knock-on took place for a scrum in front of the uprights about nine metres out. of 
seconds remaining. 45 of them, in fact. Penalty to Illawarra, a differential. With half a minute of the match remaining. So South Sydney retaining their spot near the top of the table as Russell comes up with the, the ball he tries to weave a passage through up in that vital top three it's where you've got to be this is Carberry losing it Russell scoops it away upfield gets a, a half a pass away and it's down to McIndoe the siren has sounded and referee Greg McCallum calls a halt with South Sydney running out the victors by nine points to nil. And there's the scoreboard after it was one nil at half time. Baker scored a try. He kicked two goals as well as his try in the second half. And of course on top of that was the drop goal. Illawarra failing to score. They came here confident, the Steelers, but South denied them the right of victory. But again, one has to say, well, at least the Steelers have stretched their opponents out again. Just getting into that winner's circle seems to be a problem. Let's go down to Graham Hughes as the players come back for our Man of the Match award. $750 waiting for him. Here's Graham. Thanks, Ray. Just waiting for the South Sydney players. They file off to uh, find ourselves with young Craigie Coleman, who took over much of the role for the South Sydney side tonight. Well, Craig, uh, maybe not the, the best of performances, but a very valuable two points. Yeah, Graham. What we said about the last two losses we've had, we said about winning tonight's game and winning next week's game. That's where we turn in the first three rounds of premiership. The first round were two out of three wins. How yeah, difficult the situations out there in the world. Oh, it was very slippery and uh, that made the ball very hard to handle, you know, a few blokes breaking break the play, the ball, well, it's easy to lose it. Well, to celebrate the win, $750, courtesy of Tui's, as our Tui's man of the match. Oh, thanks, uh, Tui's, thank you, Graham. All right, well, great. South Sydney uh, halfback Craig Coleman, I think we might have just beaten the rain here on the first night of Tui's Monday Night Football. We'll take a break and then be back at the Sydney Cricket Ground. A few smiles here amongst the South Sydney lineup. Mario, I spoke to Craig, our two his man of the match as he came off a, a vital importance to South to get back on the rails tonight. Yeah, well, uh, we lost uh, the last two games and uh, it was important for us to get a win and uh, I think we come away with a good, hardful, hardful win today. Well, I, I noticed early on in the game you called to the sideline for help. You've got this old ankle injury problem. Is it going to mean likely that uh, Mario Fennick may not be there next weekend? Well, I'm trying to shake it. I can't seem to shake it. I felt pretty good in the first 15, 20, but as soon as I got a twist, on it, just come back again, so I'm um, just going to have to be careful for next week. I might have to have a bit of a rest next week, so I'll just see how we go. Yeah, well, of course, also uh, just goes to show you now uh, how important it is the top three uh, positions for South Sydney. Well, uh, uh, over the season they've been waiting for us to falter, and uh, today was uh, went a long way towards us coming back and showing that we're a, a definite uh, top three contender. All right, congratulations. Thanks, Mario. All right, well, following that South Sydney victory tonight, let's go to our footy tab man, Johnny Croucher, and check all those dividends. Uh, the Illawarra coach, Brian Smith. Yeah, thanks very much, Ray. Obviously, it's a disappointed Illawarra room. Once again, the case of the one that went away. Brian, you would be disappointed with that. You had your opportunities, but couldn't come up with a result. Yeah, full marks to South. They tackle well, but in the, in the final 15 minutes, which is when any good team wins its games, uh, we couldn't hold a couple of passes that mattered. A couple of decisions went against us. Them's the breaks. A lot of sides have had success of late playing South Sydney out wide. Obviously that was going to be a game plan. How much did the condition of the cricket ground affect that? Yeah, we were disappointed with the fact that it rained because we, we were hoping to move the ball around on them a little bit. We didn't really get a chance to move the ball on them. It wouldn't have mattered if it was snowing tonight. We just we couldn't get forward far enough. And there are a few other variables in the game that didn't allow us to get forward. So them's the breaks again. You know, you can't do what you can't do. If we can just talk a little bit about South Sydney, they've done well in the competition to this point. Can they go on with it? Oh, yeah, I think the way they defended tonight and if games run the way they did tonight, if they get bogged down and if there's many penalties given in the game as there are tonight, so the game goes fairly slowly, I think Souths are a big chance, yeah. I realise that you had an opportunity next year to take up a coaching position in Wigan. After tonight's result, was it the right decision to stay? 
Yeah, I had a, had a couple of opportunities to go to England, but I decided that for my family's sake and also for my own sake, I think I enjoy the, the pub that I coach at. It's a good place to work at. And I, today, tonight's result doesn't make any, any has any bearing on that at all. What is it about Illawarra? They've lost something like four games this year by under four points. Five. Uh, Bill, to correct you there a little. Well, perhaps, perhaps uh, we just got to find something extra and maybe in a, a bit in the coaching, maybe a bit in the playing, maybe a bit in the in the revenue stake so that we can come up with another quality player or two. But uh, I like the attitude in the place. It's really good. The people are committed to one another and I think that's, that's the important ingredient. Whatever well, you've got that, you're a chance of getting there. We'll get there. Well, good luck. Thanks for talking to us. And back to you, Ray. Right, uh, Billy Anderson there with Brian Smith, the Illawarra's coach, and again, unfortunately, running second. Well, let's have a look now at the weekend results of what happened in this round of Winfield Cup football. Way back on Saturday, North 18, Western Suburbs 16, Balmain 26, Canberra 10, Cronulla 18, Canterbury 8, the shock of the round, uh, and the shock of the, the Premiership. Penrith 28, East 8, Parramatta 25, St George 12, Souths 9 tonight, defeating Illawarra nil. Well, let's have a look now at some of the highlights of this particular round of football in Winfield Cup Rugby League. McKinnon. Another pass, please. Out wide, Florimo will score. But the Magpies who like playing at home level the scores at six all when fullback Petherbridge injected himself into the back line. There's Crooks. Stands in the tackle. Ellis. Chance for West Pet the bridge is over! Cannon moved to half shortly after the break and scored the softest of tries. Cannon's through and he's over! Oh, so easy! The hard-running Petherbridge posted his second try to bring the Magpies within six points of the Bears. Good one, shoot back! When Terry Lamb started and finished a typically smart Canterby backline try after 14 minutes with some help from Chris Mortimer and then Steve O'Brien, it looked a matter of how far the Bulldogs. But Penella had other ideas, and from here on to the surprise of all, they took control. After 31 minutes, halfback Scott Gustard stepped through some skinny defence to have the Sharks level six all at the break. The Bulldogs had a bad bout of distemper, and the young Sharks were hungry for points. 11 minutes into the second half, Perry, Gustard, and then Eddinghausen did the lead up before Jonathan Docking took the final pass to plunge over, and the Sharks hit the front 10 points to 8. Gavin Miller, who had a great match, started the try, with Michael Speechley, who sent Ben Mortimer into the clear. He found Andrew Eddinghausen, who positioned Phil Hurst, who ran away for the Sharks' fourth try. Cronulla, easy, 18 points to 8 winners. Balmain were running hot just before half time when they scored one of the tries of the season, taking a 10-6 lead to the break. There were four tries in the second half with Balmain scoring three of them, completing three straight wins for the Tigers with a convincing 26-10 victory, leaving the Raiders languishing at the wrong end of the competition table. At Penrith Park, the Panthers ran the ball with great confidence right from the opening whistle. At the 10th minute, Brad Izzard chased a Greg Alexander kick, regathered, was ankle tapped, got up and scored the try. A Tony Melrose penalty made it 6-2, but 10 minutes later, a typical Greg Alexander pass set up David Lydiard. Five gone for the Dragons. Jarvis, out to O'Connor. were the highlights from Saturday and Sunday Rugby League and of course tonight was the opening appearance of Tui's Monday Night Football. Not a high score if you just came home. 9-0 in favour of South. These were the highlights. Now the ball across to one of the Moon Brothers, Jason. 
Jason Moon, the blonde-headed winger. Looks like he's pretty quick off the mark. Fennick turns it back, finds Rampling. Across to Coleman. On it goes through Boyle to Dejura. Ball goes loose. Illawarra comes up with it. Running across the ground was upfield. He gets the pass away to McIndoe. Very fast, this man. This is Evans, one-handed down on the bounce taken by Coleman. He's on the halfway, off to Baker. Baker away now for David Moon to give to his brother Jason. He comes back in field. By golly, I'll tell you what, every time he's handled, he's done well. Fennick, Coleman, De Dura. Coleman. Picked up by Crookshank. Crookshank, beautifully tackled by Mackey. Grass cutting tackle. Baker goes for the drop goal. That's how urgent the situation is starting to appear. It's a field goal for Neil Baker. Coleman again. Gets it to Baker. Baker scores. First try of the night. First try of Monday night football season. Scored by Neil Baker. Well, the script had been written... Inside, way, inside and outside, it's gone to Carberry. Oh, it's been put down by the replacement. Baker. So Russell had only just taken the field. Now it's Mackey putting the, the kick high. It's coming down in the end goal. Oh, he doesn't know where it is, Crookshank. But it's a penalty, two Souths. Patterson, McPherson, Carberry, away from one, gets it out now, and here's McIndoe, McIndoe with some space to work in, has to kick ahead, and I think Crookshank has given the penalty, he's waiting for the referee, at the point where the ball landed, he's given the penalty, so 9-0 in favour of the Rabbitohs over the Steelers, in um, uh, a match that was, uh, of course, marred by stoppages and a lot of drop ball, but brought about, I'm led to believe, by uh, the greasiness of the centre area here at the Sydney Cricket Ground in the main. Let's have a look at the Premiership table now. With that win by South, of course, it's put them firmly again in that top three. That was the big risk factor tonight for them. 24 Manly, 22 Parramatta South, 20 Penrith, 19 Canterbury. There's your five. Balmain one point out of it. Then we have North Sydney on 16, St George, they're five points out of the five, West 13, East 12, Illawarra 12, Cronulla 10 and Canberra bottom of the table on eight. We'll get another view on tonight's match and talk to Wayne Pearce about uh, his uh, situation on the table, just one point out of the five. After this break to Wayne and to David Fordham. As I look inside a very crowded South Sydney restaurant, you can tell they're the winners. I was going to say, you can tell they're the winners. When you come here and there aren't any winners, there's a lot more drinks available, mate. <laughs> you can also tell it's a South Sydney victory. Uh, you're wearing a nice smile tonight. Yes, I certainly am. It was a good one. Uh, it brought up a point earlier about uh, everybody, Billy and the rest of you, were talking about they should be moving the ball out wide, and I think George Pickens was smart enough to try and maybe adjust for that. However, that's up for grabs, uh, whether or not that's the truth. But anyway, thanks to Ray, producer, Ray, commentator, Graham and Billy uh, for having me here. It's been wonderful, and good luck with the rest of your Monday nights. I think they're going to be really great. Thanks, our thanks to Don Lane. And one man who uh, may well have uh, read into that, if George Piggins was in fact counting that attack out wide, was our man at home, Wayne Pearce. Let's go to Wayne. He's with David Fordham. Thanks very much, uh, Graham. Well, Wayne, uh, South Sydney can't be written off in this premiership. But they've been the quiet achievers getting through to equal second spot without a lot of fanfare and a lot of flurry. But obviously they, they've got to be considered as far as the, uh, the premiership is concerned now. Yeah. Oh, certainly. Uh, to be in that position at this stage of the competition, they're, you know, they're in the box seat, really. Uh, the critics have been waiting for the wheels to fall off South Sydney for a number of weeks now. And I think after the two successive losses uh, in the last two weeks, uh, they said that their time had come, but I think tonight they've silenced those critics once again because that was a good win under conditions. And they've kept
forget what that undefeated record intact Monday Night Football and lights at the SCG. Yeah, they've got a, uh, an undefeated record, as you say, David, and um, I think that in the open field out there at the cricket ground, it's a temptation for teams to throw the ball around, but their bustling defence uh, again tonight nullified any movements Illawarra started. Well, Wayne Balmain now, one point out of the, uh, the top five at the moment. A crucial match, the NEC big game from the Parramatta Stadium next Sunday against Parramatta. Now, you've played there uh, twice this year against East, got beaten by them surprisingly, 16-6, so gave the Bulldogs a bit of a workout, but Parramatta at home in front of their home crowd. That will be a top match and a tough one for Canada, uh, for Balmain. Yeah, we're lucky that we've had a couple of games at Parramatta Stadium to experience the ground before we come up against Parramatta. And um, although they've been a side that's had the wood on us over the last couple of seasons, I'm confident that we're coming right at the right David, stage can, I, can I just jump in for a second and ask Wayne a question about Scott Gale? Uh, the transition to the centres, Wayne, it seems to have been a great success. Uh, Scotty, can we expect him to see, to see him wearing the three or the four from here on in or what? Yes, Ray, he's got a little bit more room out there and with his pace, uh, he certainly capitalises on that. I think one big big plus in his favour playing in the centres at this stage of the year is that he's playing outside Tony Myler and Tony's uh, an unbelievably witty ball player and um, with, the, with the options that he's got and Scotty being one of those, we're certainly cutting them up out there. Wayne, obviously uh, with that versatility though, that's a great plus in kangaroo year. Yeah, I, I certainly hope the selectors haven't overlooked Scott yet because he can play half, 5'8", centre and even wing. And uh, he's certainly, with his pace, and uh, he's also a good cover defender, he may be a valuable acquisition. Well, and on that point, the uh, New South Wales League have opted to, uh, for the players chosen in the State of Origin matches to be available for the round of matches leading up to uh, the final State of Origin match. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Because it really is, even though New South Wales leading 2-0, it is such a crunch match for first up selection against New Zealand and ultimately for the Kangaroo Tour later this year. A lot of people have written off the importance, the, the fact that you're winning 2-0, that it's just the final match of the series. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it certainly shouldn't be written off and the players that will be playing in their match, I'm, I'm sure that'll be in the, in, foremost in their minds, will be the selections uh, immediately after the match of the, um, firstly, the test against New Zealand and if you can get into that side, you've got a uh, front running job for the Kangaroo Tour. And whilst I realise the situation that the clubs are in, they, they want the players to play for um, their respective clubs, Canterbury and Balmain in particular. But um, you know the, the players will certainly hope that they'll be coming through with no injuries. A lot of contention uh, about that selection of the Australian side, particularly in the 5-8 spot, they're talking about uh, Kenny and, and Wally Lewis. But this could also influence uh, where you're chosen, the Australian side. If Wally is chosen at lock, it possibly means you move into the second row. Where do you prefer to play? Well, you know, I've played most of my football at lock and obviously I'd like to continue playing there, but I've, play, I've played a lot of representative football at second row and I still enjoy that. Challenge. Okay, well we're at the home of Wayne Pearce, the first uh, time we've come out to uh, one of the players' homes in Monday Night Football. It's been great, uh, Wayne, being out here with you and Terry. Uh, it's been great for Very you. well fed indeed, <laughs> and uh, I'll remember that. Uh, we'll take a break here at Monday Night Football. Don't go away because there's still more to come in our coverage tonight.